Hey, welcome to Manti, Utah. I'm Scott Walters with Living in Provo, Utah. Today I'm in the beautiful city of Manti, Utah. It's the county seat for the, the county of San Pete. San Pete County is, you know, most of the cities are an hour, maybe a little less south of the Provo area. I've been wanting to do a pros and cons video about this beautiful county. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the five pros and the five cons of living in San Pete County. Uh, just to give you a little background, San Pete County, I know I was looking at old Dr. Google earlier today, make sure I got the numbers right, but it says that the San Pete County population is 29,106. And of course, Manti here is the county seat. It's got a population of about 3,500. The largest city is Ephraim. It's just up the road about five miles. That's where Snow College is, so it's kind of a college town. That's 5,700 people, so that's the largest city. Uh, just to go over the cities in uh, San Pete County, you've got Centerfield, Ephraim, Fairview, Fountain Green. Fountain Green has a lot of good memories for me. I had some uh, family friends that had a summer house there when I was a kid, so we used to get away. It was right across the street from the city park there. I just remember having fun playing there in the summers and running across the street to the park. And then you also have Gunnison. Now, Gunnison, to me, it's part of San Pete, but it's so far, it's really on the furthest south end of San Pete County, so it's Sometimes it feels like it's a little detached from the rest of the county. But anyways, it's part of the county. Of course, you got Manti here, again, the county seat. And you've got Moroni. you got Mount Pleasant, Spring City. Some of the towns that you have in San Pete County are Fayette, Mayfield, Sterling, and Wales. And then some of the un unincorporated communities are Axtell, Chester, Christianburg, Freedom, Indianola. Indianola is more on the north end of San Pete County. And really, that's where a lot of people go trying to live off grid. I know quite a few people that have properties with a little bit of acreage and they're trying to get off grid, live uh, you know, by solar and septic and wells, things of that nature. You also have Jerusalem, that's kind of out by Freedom and, uh, and Wales. And then you got Milburn, it's just a little, well, it's a little closer to Indianola. Then you got Oak Creek and Spearmint, or sorry, I don't know if I said that right. Anyway, so anyway, I'm gonna show you or give you my five pros and my five con cons of living in San Pete County. So with that, uh, hey, and if you're thinking of moving to Utah, reach out to me. Give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. I can't help you if you don't reach out to me. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and tap on the notification bell so you can stay up to date every time I uh, drop another video about living in Utah. So with that, let's talk about the five pros and five cons of living in San Pete County. So right now I am in a canyon called Box Canyon. It's up a bigger canyon called Maple Canyon. Really, I think one of the biggest draws to living in San Pete County one of the biggest pros is it's such a um, great outdoor lifestyle living county. It's a very rural county. Again, there's just under 30,000 people that live in San Pete County. So there's just a lot of room to roam. Uh, over on the west side is uh, this uh, Maple Canyon. This is, I'm gonna say west side, the west side of San Pete Valley. In fact, uh, the way you get here is you come down, if you're coming from the north, when you come through the city of Fountain Green, the last right that you can take, there'll be a sign, two signs that say Maple Canyon and Wales. If you hang a right right there, um, in fact, once you hang a right there on your left, just the very next block is a little red brick house. That's one of the first homes I ever sold when I got into real estate. But anyway, once you hang that right, there's about six, maybe seven miles. You come down to an unincorporated part of San Pete County called Freedom. And again, there'll be some signs for Maple Canyon and uh, you turn right there and just take that road maybe a mile, two miles up in the canyon. They'll take you up into Maple Canyon on your right-hand side. There's no sign for it. At least I couldn't see a sign, but there's, you just have to keep keep kind of a lookout. There's, on the left side, there's a little place to to park. And then if you go past that a little bit, on the, again, on the left, there'll be another little pullout for parking. Um, those two parking spots are kind of in between where you go up into Box Canyon. It's really become quite a popular place for mountain climbers or rock climbers, excuse me. In fact, everywhere up in this canyon, I've noticed a lot of the carabiners and things that are that have been hammered into the into these uh, cliff walls. So it's really been become a, let's see, there we go, wrong direction. There we go, look back up in there. But uh, oftentimes you come up in here, you'll see people doing a lot of rock climbing. But this isn't the only activity up here. I mean, you, there's camping up here, in fact, Driving all up and down this road, I saw a lot of choke cherries and elderberries. Those are just wild berries that grow wild along the side of the road. You can pick those and make some beautiful syrups and jams and jellies out of those. This is a choke cherry bush or tree, and you can see those choke cherries on there are pretty much ready. We call them choke cherries because when you eat them, they really they make it make your mouth feel dry. It's really weird, but man, they make some of the best 
syrup I've ever had in my life. And you see this right up on the side of the road. This is a whole choke cherry forest right here. All right, this is an elderberry bush just off to the side of the road. If you look at that, the elderberries are, oh, those are probably about ready. They're nice and dark purple, blue. Make very good jams, very good jellies. And as you can see, it is just right off the side of the road. And just right up the road a little bit from here was that big choke cherry orchard I showed you. That bush right there is also an elderberry bush. Here's another elderberry bush just right off the side of the road. This one's not very loaded with berries, but one thing you do need to watch out for right next to it is a bunch of stinging nettle. This is a, I don't know if you call it poisonous or venomous bush, but if you touch it, it will burn when it gets on your skin. I found that lesson out really hard when I was five years old when I walked through a whole little meadow of stinging nettle. I have never forgotten it and never walked through it again. On the east side of San Pete Valley is the Skyline Drive, probably one of the most beautiful drives in all of Utah. It gets you up high up on top of the uh, plateau there. You'll see a lot of pine forests as well as quaking aspen forests, a lot of lakes and streams. Um, there's people have cabins up on there. And then of course, there's just a lot of, a lot of places where you can ride your four wheelers, a lot of places that you can hunt, fish and hike. So when it comes to uh, outdoor recreation, Sam Pete's really got it all. In fact, uh, just a few canyons to the north of where I'm at is a, another awesome canyon called Log Canyon. I love going up there on the four wheelers, taking my family and riding around all up in there. I've done a lot of four wheeling and hunting and hiking up in there. Just be aware that there is a lot of, um, what do you call it, a lot of private property up there. So you just kind of got to uh, stay aware of that. Maybe make sure you got the Onyx hunt map so that you're staying on uh, public lands, not getting on private lands. But that's really, that's also true for up on the skyline. There's also a lot of uh, private property up there. But uh, anyway, that's just one of my big pros for San Pete County. There's just a lot of fun outdoor recreation. I've brought my family up here to this uh, box canyon many, many times, but I just think in my three youngest, I have never brought here. So it's probably time to bring them back and introduce them to Box Canyon. But with that, that's one of my pros. Now, another thing I wanted to mention about uh, the Skyline Drive, there's an area, several areas up there where you have some high mountain. My dad always called them Zerg, so I don't even know if that's what you call them, but it's just the areas where the snow doesn't really melt all the way in the summer because it's just up really high and shaded. And a lot of times in those areas, you'll get a bacteria that grows in the snow. I don't know the scientific name of it. I actually just read an article about it not long ago, but kind of the uh, nickname for it is watermelon snow. And there's a spot up on top of the Skyline Drive that said my dad started taking me to when I was a little boy. And I actually just took my three youngest kids. I was down here. I've got a property, uh, it's a couple acres. Well, it's 1.8 acres. Maybe I'll put a link here to a video for that property. You can reach out to me if you have interest in that. It's kind of a private little uh, off-grid camping site. It has a little off-grid cabin. Anyway, I took them up on top of the Skyline Drive up to the watermelon snow and let them run around on it. You, once you, when you kind of scrape your feet across it, it turns like a salmon orange color. And sometimes it has a little odor to it. It smells a little bit like watermelon. I have never tried tasting it. But anyway, it's just a lot of outdoor just natural fun things to do here in San Pete County, like getting up and hiking, finding the water, some watermelon snow, or hiking these box canyons. Um, you know, this is a slot canyon. Uh, there's some rocks at the end of it that have fallen down over recent years that didn't used to be there when I was a kid. And you could get to the very back of this canyon, and it is, it just ends. There's just, a, you run right into a rock wall. But anyway, you know, it's a fun little place to take the family for a hike enjoy some nature and that is the allure of living in San Pete County is it's just so much outdoor activity that you can do. And tell me what you think of watermelon snow. I didn't um, know it existed but it's kind of cool. Yeah. It'll it'll get your shoes uh, pink. Yeah, Pretty sure hikes. it comes off. But like the bottom of your shoes are pink. And, yeah. the, uh, and my pants. The camera might make it just look like it's dirt. It definitely has dirt on top of it but it's yeah. It's definitely pink. And also, when you walk on it, it kind of mixes it together and makes it more of a salmon orange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, at the little bottom part, they're less dirty. So. This is one of the things that we love about living where we do. This is about an hour from our home in Salem. We're up on top of the Skyline Drive area. 
So if you're thinking of moving to the area, reach out to me, give me a call, shoot a text and an email. I can't help you if you don't reach out to me, so give me a call. If you buy in this area, I'll show you our secret little spot for watermelon snow. All right, I'm currently just standing across the street or kind of on the campus of Snow College in Ephraim, Utah. My uh, con, one of my cons to living in St. Pete County is just there's limited job opportunities. Really the biggest employers are probably gonna be Snow College. You have a state prison in Gunnison. You have Norbest Turkey Plant in Moroni. Uh, but there's also, there's just a lot of agricultural type jobs. There's, uh, you know, a few medical clinics. I imagine that the school district's probably one of the other big uh, employers. But when it comes to it, you, pro you may end up having to commute. I remember when I got home from serving my uh, mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This was back in 1993. Uh, my suits were worn out from, you know, tracking every day and knocking on doors. And so I wanted some new suits. So I went to the mall in Orem to uh, Mr. Mac, which is a kind of a well-known suit store in, the, in Utah. And anyway, the guy that helped me, awesome dude, he lived in Fairview, which meant that he was commuting an hour every day. Well, two hours, really an hour up, an hour back just to go to work and have a job. So what that means is there's a lot of people that live down here. If they want to have jobs, they may end up commuting to Utah County for work. Now, on the flip side, I've got some clients who just a couple of years ago during the pandemic, I'd sold them their first home, a townhome in Provo, probably about 1,600 square feet or so. We ended up selling that, uh, that townhome for around 350000 And because of uh, the pandemic, a lot of companies going to remote work, they actually moved here to Ephraim. They got a 3,000 square foot house roughly on a half acre for the exact same price. So um, that happens to be my really my, my one of my pros is the fact you've got affordable living down here. So along with the, you know, my con of limited job opportunities, well, one of the one of the pros is affordable living because because I think because of the lack of some of those amenities, there's just not a huge population here. So. There's not a huge draw to live here, which makes the housing more affordable. So that's definitely one of my pros is you've got affordable housing down here. You're going to pay probably 100000 at least less for more more home down here in San Pete County. So if you're looking for some affordable housing, this may be a place to go. And if you can work remotely, then this is an awesome place to live with the remote uh, ruralness of the area and just uh, just just kind of being out of the rat race. Hey, don't forget to like, subscribe, and tap on that notification bell so you can stay current every time I drop another video about living in Utah. Uh, hey, maybe living in a rural, rural county like San Pete County is not what you're after. So if it's not, go check out my pros and cons of living in Provo, Utah, which is in Utah County, which is a much more uh, developed, larger uh, area, larger urban area, with a lot more amenities. Or if you still want to live closer to the amenities in the bigger cities, but still have kind of the country field and go check out my video about living in south utah county in the farmland uh, country there so if you want to watch that video click on here okay my next uh, con is there's limited amenities you know while the small town charms appealing it also means limited access to amenities like shopping centers entertainment venues and uh, di diverse dining options residents might need to travel to neighboring counties for more extensive choices for example I'm in Ephraim, which is, it's the biggest city in San Pete County, and this is where you'll find the most amenities in this county. In fact, this is where, this is the only Walmart in all of San Pete County. And this is also the only town that really you're gonna find any of the chain type fast food restaurants. In fact, right behind me is a brand new Wendy's. There's also McDonald's here, Subway, Little Caesars. Um, and that's kind of about it. And pretty much all the rest of the towns, you're just gonna find some, uh, hometown mom and pop uh, malt shops, hamburger joints. But you're, uh, when it comes to like sit down uh, dining places for, uh, you know, like some of the chain dining, you're just, there's none of that here. Yeah, because it's just such a rural community. I assume that it's eventually that'll get here. But, you know, as far as shopping goes, you're probably going to be traveling up to Utah County. That's really where your closest amenities are for more shopping opportunities is South, South Utah County. Payson would be the first community to come to, and that's got some a few shopping centers. But really, the biggest, sh closest shopping centers is going to be the uh, the uh, Spanish Fork area. I'm trying to think of the what that's called, something Creek area, Spanish Fork. They've got a lot of different uh, dining, shopping, 
uh, opportunities. Uh, you know, you do have a movie theater here in town in Ephraim. That's probably because, you know, this is a college town, so they do have a movie theater here. But when it comes to other entertainment venues and options, it's just super limited here. Um, they do have some golf courses nearby. There's a really cool course uh, in uh, Fairview called the Skyline Mountain Resort, the golf course. That's a fun place to go. Uh, they also have a Palisades golf course down in Manti. So they have a, some amenities that way. Of course, I've already talked about the main amenities for this area would be, as far as entertainment, it's going to be outdoor stuff. So anyway, just uh, my uh, my one con is that there's limited entertainment and shopping opportunities here in San Pete County. Okay, so one of the pros for living in San Pete County, it's just got the small town charm. Again, there's uh, the biggest city is like 5,600 people. Every town's little. Most of the towns have these cute little main streets with the old buildings that were built back in the 1800s and into the 1900s. And so you've really got, you know, if you prefer that close-knit, really friendly community atmosphere, then not, Stampede County offers a range of small towns. They have a strong sense of community. You know, it can lead to a lot of meaningful relationships and really a more relaxed place to live. So that's just one of my pros. It's just a sm just that small town charm for every city. Right now I'm in, on the main street in Manti. I was just in uh, Ephraim, the college town. It's got a cute little main street as well. So does Mount Pleasant. And they're just all small towns around three, four, five thousand people. So pretty much it feels like everybody knows everybody and, and you just kind of get to know everyone more. And it's just, uh, you know, as, as compared to living in the big cities where you may not even know any of your neighbors, here you're gonna know a lot of the people and just uh, have that real sense of community. It's a beautiful uh, summer afternoon here in San Pete. It's August, so soft times we get a little bit afternoon storms that come up, kind of kind of the monsoon type things. But right now it's really beautiful. But one of the downsides to living here is you can have some really harsh winters. The weather seems to be a little bit colder down here. I assume that's because the elevation for a lot of these towns a little bit higher than say up in Utah County, where the winters can be a little bit more mild. But generally speaking, the winters down here can be harsh. You can get a lot of snow, but generally speaking, anywhere that's uh, along the you know, the Wasatch front, the Wasatch back in Utah, you're going to deal with that. That's just part of living in Utah. You're going to have some harsh winter conditions from time to time. So something to just be aware of that uh, you'll have uh, some of those conditions. But the flip side of that is it makes for some great winter recreation. You can get up in the mountains with your snowmobiles and just snowmobile to your heart's content. A lot of people love doing that. You also got ice fishing in the winter. So it's not all bad having big winters, but it's just something you need to be aware of. So my next to pro for living in San Pete County is there's a lot of historical and cultural heritage here. Uh, San Pete County's got a rich history of several pioneer era sites and historic buildings. In fact, right behind me is the uh, the county courthouse. And it's kind of, it's was built a long time ago. I was just in front of the uh, Manti Temple. That was actually built in the 1880s. That's one of the more historical buildings right now it's currently undergoing renovation but it's still just a beautiful uh, scenic building that the uh, old uh, mormon settlers built way back in the 1800s and i'm also in front of uh, let me come on over here i'm over here and still a man time right in front of the uh, manti's historic city hall and let me just turn around so you can see that there's the building check this out check this cool old building out uh, you'll see a lot of the buildings build out of this old uh, I don't even know what kind of stone it is but the Manti Temple looks similar with that type of stone the county courthouse looks similar with also that type of stone I also I sold a house in uh, Ephraim probably 10-15 years ago it was built in 1880 and it had this exact same type of stone just right off right off the main street so there's a lot of historical buildings here in this area there's a strong Scandinavian heritage and many of the rel many of the residents uh, are descendants of Scandinavian uh, ancestors and so they've got uh, lots of different events like the Scandinavian Her Heritage Festival that goes on here. Just some of the fun here for San Pete County. There's just still a lot of rich history in this area. Okay, my final uh, downside or con to living in San Pete County is, is if you're seeking a big cosmopolitan feel with a lot of diverse environment, you're probably not going to find that here. The vast majority of the residents are going to be members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Of course, not everybody. So when it comes to just like a lot of cultural diversity, you're not really gonna find a lot of that here. And especially like you say, you want to go out and party on the weekends and go to bars and nightlife and club life. That's just really pretty non-existent down here. It's just a rural county. There's not a lot of that type of activity 
here. I'm sure you can find some of it somewhere, maybe there in the college town of Ephraim, but uh, it's just a, it's just a rural quiet town um, and not a lot, not a ton of cultural diversity. Okay, so one of my biggest pros for living in St. Pete County is just scenic beauty. Let me just pan around. This is such a rural county, but it's surrounded by mountains on all sides and just tons of wide open space everywhere. And that's what makes it so awesome. Is there's just so much rural, open agricultural land. You're not crammed into a huge city. You have big, beautiful mountains on the east side. The, the uh, Skyline Drive Mountains. Lots of lakes, high mountain lakes up there, and rivers and streams and forests. Just really beautiful. On the other side of the of the valley, you have a whole bunch of other beautiful mountains, beautiful canyons, hiking trails. And I just think that's just the real, one of the real big allures to this whole area is it's just really wide open, lots of mountains, lots of beautiful scenery. And that's why a lot of people choose to live here is they love living in this rural atmosphere. You'll see all around the place, you'll see turkey sheds all over this county. In fact, I had these turkey sheds for sale about four years ago. So uh, again, a lot of agriculture on this area, which it just keeps it rural, but you'll see a lot of these turkey sheds, people growing turkeys for the Norbest turkey plant up in Moroni. And uh, anyway, there's one of my big uh, big uh, pros. Is this is just really an outdoor paradise for outdoor enthusiasts and nature loving. So move on down to San Pete, you'll love it for those reasons. Okay, so one of the cons to living in this area is you just have limited access to advanced healthcare facilities and specialized medical services. I'm right here in front of the uh, Manti. Oh, what do they call that? The Intermountain Anti Clinic. There's, they've got one in Ephraim. I think they have some in some of the other communities. But as far as having really large hospitals, they don't have a big, huge hospital here. If you have some pretty major uh, medical needs, you're going to probably be uh, sent up to probably the closest hospital you'd go to would be the Pro Winter Mountain Hospital, maybe the one in Spanish Fork, or maybe even up to Salt Lake. So really, you've just got a bunch of medical clinics down here, but no real big hospital complex. So that's just one of the the downside is you just don't, compared to larger urban areas, you just don't have the same access to some of the medical care, which means maybe some of your advanced uh, needs for uh, doctors, you may be traveling a little bit to get up, most likely up into the Utah County area to see some doctors for more advanced medical care and screening. So just one of the downsides to living here in San Pete. Hey, thanks for watching this video about the San Pete County living in San Pete County and the five pros and cons. Hey, maybe living in a rural area is not what you're after. If it's not, go check out my uh, pros and cons video of living in Provo, Utah. You can do that by clicking here. That's a little, uh, area that's a little more populated, a little more amenities. Or let's say maybe you wanna live uh, closer to those amenities and closer to Provo, but still want that rural feel, then go check out my living in South Utah County, kind of the farmland area of Utah County. You can watch that video by clicking here.